Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing something totally different. It seems to be every week we're doing something totally different, but I promise you this is gonna be different. So I got invited to go to Peterson Museum to check out the vault. Now, I've been to the Peterson Museum twice for a Bugatti event, but never been to the vault. The vault supposedly is by invitation only. So I'm excited. So the last time I was here, I took pictures with Mr. Winkleman here at the Bugatti event and he asked me to bring my Rembrandt and that's when they were about to show the Bugatti Chiron presentation. Man, that was like three years ago. Man, maybe I should have got the exposed carbon for my 4GP. You like the way it looks? I love it. Oh my God. But I don't know, Heritage Edition, I guess is more valuable. What do you guys think? <laughs> oh, cool. yeah. Pleasure yeah. meeting you. Pleasure meeting you. And uh, this is Nate. And Nate, uh, how's it going? Cool. Yeah. Welcome Thank to the Peterson. <laughs> Thank you. I've been here twice. I yeah. was just telling Nate, both times was for a Bugatti event. Yes. And uh, never been to the vault. Yeah. But, you know, incredible collection, obviously. Thank you. Yeah, the vault yeah. is mostly our collection. I mean, yeah. Uh, all like one through three, which is the public floors. Yeah. Those are typically like a 50-50 split between our cars and cars that are on loan. Yeah. Uh, so they're always changing. Uh, and one of the new exhibits is supercars. I don't know if Ian mentioned that to you. No. But we got some pretty cool supercars if you want to check those out and then we can head down to the vault. Say no more. Yeah. Let's go supercars. You yeah. said yeah. the magic word. Yeah. <laughs> so there is three floors and then you have the vault. That's so correct. four levels. That's correct. Yeah, wow. we actually have five. Uh -huh. um, the fifth level is uh, vent space on the top. So this whole floor is supercars. Uh, it's our newest exhibit, so we actually opened it during closure because we're closed. Uh, but it's a chronological story of the supercar. So we kind of come around this corner and then it takes you through the teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, all the way up to modern. Wow. Uh, and then that will uh, kick off our next exhibit, which will be hypercar. So this ends at 2004 and then starts again for the next one from 2004 on for hypercar, yeah. Wow. So we've got Matt's Countach, just as like the poster car, uh -huh. you know, kind of getting you warmed up when you think of supercars, you think of, you know, outlandish designs like this. Yeah. Uh, this is an 88. Um, and boy, for its time, this thing was so futuristic. Oh my God. It still yeah. is. Yeah. To me, I think, you know, the Countach is still one of the most beautiful supercars. This kind of goes around the corner. And this is really, again, kind of outside of the chronology. Mm -hmm. uh, into the uh, 1913 Mercer race about. So this is original unrestored, over a hundred years old. Wow. Um, it, it was repainted sometime in the 50s. Wow. But Mercer... Is that wooden wheels? Wooden wheels. Yeah, that's ah. where the, the, the expression uh, tire kicker came in because you kick ah. the tires because uh, you can see they're mated to the wheel. Yeah. And so if you kicked it and it wobbled, it meant that uh, the car was not in the greatest shape. And that's where that expression <laughs> came from. <laughs> Uh, Very cool. But this car was one of the first uh, production cars capable of 100 miles an hour. No. In 1913, yeah. And this raced wow. at the Santa Monica Grand Prix, which was called the American Grand Prix. Uh, so this was kind of like the start of high performance motor cars. Yeah. Um, and Mercer's were one of the first cars really to be collected at a price above their selling price. So, in the so 40s, you demand a premium. Exactly, okay. yeah. These are you know, seven figure cars now. Wow. Uh, just because they're so rare and they have that racing pedigree. The Duesenberg, so you know, Duesenberg's oh, were the yeah. most expensive, fastest cars on the road. Absolutely. Uh, this is a 33, it's a Murphy body, which was built in Pasadena. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is an SJ, so it's supercharged. 400 horsepower in 1933. Wow. Most powerful cars. Um, they normally had 320, but you could tweak the manifold. And this one has the tweaked manifold to get that power. Wow. Is uh, this the same model that was in the Great Gatsby? Uh, similar. Similar? Yeah, we yeah. actually had the Great Gatsby car here, which was a, a, a Duesenberg II. And those were essentially reproductions. So the mm. Duesenberg brand rebodied them on Lincoln chassis. Uh, so they weren't, you know, Duesenberg chassis. Yeah. Uh, and so they were built, I think, in the 70s or 80s. Yeah. So this is all original. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So this is worth a lot more money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I just can't focus because I'm looking at that. McLaren. McLaren <laughs> F1. That's oh, the, my God. It's an LM. LM. I love that yeah. McLaren orange. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think the cool thing about, you know, this is the halo car of this exhibit is, um, you know, you look at all the cars yeah. and this pulled a lot of the best from the supercars through the yeah. eras. It took those lessons 
It's incredible to think, I mean, it did 240 miles an hour, and that's why they did 225, but I know they did 241, I Yeah, think. the arrow, when you change it yeah. for the LM spec, yeah. change the top the, speed. The, the yeah. regular one, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these are gorgeous cars, and uh, oh my God. the T50. You this know, takes your soon. breath away. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah. You know, there's two cars in here that takes my breath away. This one. And then the 1939 Bugatti 57C that belonged to Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> of your own. And we'll see that. Yeah. 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 That <laughs> one, last two times I was here, I had to yeah. check it out. But this is so gorgeous. Yeah, this orange is, is spectacular in this car. We don't see them very much in this no. color. Well, my speed yeah. tail's coming. Very cool. Yeah, and then the M6 is kind of the grandfather. Oh, uh, wow. And the M6, uh, this was, you know, Bruce McLaren raced Can Am. Yeah, and this was a homologated Can Am car that he created for street use, wow. and so there's only like three of these in existence. Wow! Um, and how much something like this is valued? At? It's it's really priceless. Because I would there's say not, nothing created. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's whatever you get two people in the room bidding on. Yeah. You know what they want. Um, you know, it's in extremely difficult to get the dust out, so the owner puts the little stuffed animals in there, <laughs> uh, which is a good, you know, that method. Is cool. But you can tell, you know, it's a yeah. Can Am car underneath. Yeah. yeah. Weighs nothing. It's got a Chevy engine. Uh, but Can Am was the most unrestricted form of racing. Yeah. So there was no limitations on power and no limitations on aero. So it's the most dangerous. But wow. a, a lot of the innovation for racing and motorsports came from came there. From yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, but this is another favorite of mine, F40. Yeah. I had one, but. You know, I gotta get another one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I named my son Enzo. That's a so great. Yeah. If I get an F40, you yeah. may complain later. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's the precursor. It means he has to buy the Enzo for his son. Yeah. <laughs> well, F40 was the last en car Enzo, Enzo Ferrari built. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's the, probably the most raw version oh, yeah. of the. Oh yeah. It's called the Henry Ford Ferrari because it was when Henry Ford and Enzo were actually yeah. um, courting each other. You know, Enzo needed Henry Ford's money. And before that all fell through, uh, he built this car and the Ford family put this in the design studio. Mm. And so if you look at a lot of the design cues on it, you'll see like the integrated mm. tailpipe, the egg crate mm -hmm. grill. They ended up on the 55 Thunderbird. Interesting. Um, yeah, I saw that movie Ford versus Ferrari and yeah. that was the story when yeah. he went to Yeah, that was the fallout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and this is very cool. Yeah. You can still see the cracks in the paint. Yeah. Everything original. Wow. And GT40s were 40 inches off the ground, so that's yeah. why, you know, this is an original GT40. Yeah, I mean, GT40s were inspired, you know, came from this, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, homologation was, in order to compete at races like Le Mans, mm -hmm. you had to have a certain amount of road go inversion, so this was one of them. Uh, um, and, you know, the old cool. saying was, you know, you go race and win on the track, and then you sell cars because people want to drive, you know, what they saw race and win. Oh, you don't need to tell me about <laughs> this one. So I, I had I had uh, almost the same model. So yeah. I had the the S competition, yeah. S seven competition, which is this car. Yeah. With like thousand or eleven 1, hundred horsepower. Oh wow! But I sold it because it scared the crap out of me every oh, time yeah. I drove it. These are race cars for the road. I mean, they yeah. really are. Right? I mean, this has no mercy. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if the road is a little bit wet. I think also you look at this in scale to the other cars and it's massive. Huge. Yeah. You yeah, don't it's really. It's long and it's wide. Yeah. Super low. But, but it is cool it's a looking. gorgeous car. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, you know, it really was a Lamar car that they just put on the road. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, this, you had probably the twin turbo, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this, this is a non-turbo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because it's 550 or Yeah. So the twin turbo doubled the power. So I can't even imagine what that was. Oh, <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. In one second, you're going straight second, next second, you're, you're on the wrong <laughs> side of the road. Uh, this was the MC12. So this was Ooh, Maserati's. With the uh, Enzo engine in it. It's an yeah. Enzo underneath completely, essentially. Really? Chassis, powertrain. They just really rebodied it, wow. did the interior. Uh, this is the only black one, mm -hmm. uh, and you know Schumacher did all the testing on these, so he was mm -hmm. um, like the you know chief driver for this wow. for this car. Now they all come with the the fins. cuts in the hood, really. Yeah, the core. This is the Corsa model, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they all all have those fins. Typically, they're white and blue, which is the Maserati yep. colors. Yeah, I've seen a few of those like at car shows, but, but wow, I I think these gorgeous. are much prettier than the Enzo. The Enzo is very harsh looking, yeah. and these are kind of sculpturesque. It is. Again, it's kind of Huge. spaceships for the road. This looks like, you know, wow. 
but it's got the ends of window. You can kind of yeah, tell yeah. the same shape. This was the Fast and the Furious. So this is typically, you know, we're closed now. I want to see the logo. Typically a tactile. Uh -huh. uh, if you know Freddie Hernandez, uh, he's got the uh -huh. Tavarish. Yeah. He built this one. So no he way. bought the, you know, the screen used one, which they had just destroyed. Yeah. And he completely rebuilt it. So when I we do open, the interior. Yeah, he did a great job. I mean, it was in really bad shape. Um, and, you know, when we open back up, you know, hopefully when this all goes away, yeah. uh, this will become a tactile so people can take the picture of it, you know, get in the scene of Fast and Very Furious. Cool. So we'll, we'll awesome. head down to the vault. All right. Uh, yeah, that, cool. the shot we got is probably one of my favorite ports. So who lines. owns that now? Is that's that, ours. No way. Yeah, that's always been, yeah. Oh, so it, uh, it was originally in, uh, in, in France, right? Museum or who owned it? So or was it not a collector? So it, it's been, it's been in collector's hands since the late seventies. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was, is that was a gift from the French government. Yeah. To the shop, French, the shop, yeah, yeah. After you. Yeah. Um, and then in 19, I think 78 or 79. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, put at auction. Nobody attended the auction and it sold no. for like $750. That's it. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> You're making me sick. So, you know, this shows you got to show up to the What auction. year? What year? That was like 79. Uh, I was only eight years old. <laughs> okay. You can't blame me. Well, we had that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, so and somebody bought it for 750, 750 bucks. bucks. You know, at the time, you know, it was probably still worth at least half a million dollars, yeah. right? Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and so, you know, then it c continued to just, you know, skyrocket in value. I mean, that it is a one of one. Yeah. Built for the Shaw around. It's probably, you know, if, uh, How much do you think that's worth? I would say somewhere around 15. 15? Yeah. All right. Well, let me know when you're tired of <laughs> holding it. I'll make you a tender off. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, I didn't know you guys have motorcycles, too. Oh, yeah. We've got everything. So we have over 250 vehicles. I mean, we own the entire city block. Yeah. So we have a full city block underground of storage. Amazing. Um, and you know the the vault it's a little out of shape right now because we've actually got a lot of donations in that's one of the biggest ways we grow the collection is through sure. donors um, but it starts off here so it starts off with the chronology mm -hmm. so you've got the 1903 Cadillac wow. and we have it next to a 1904 Studebaker to show the transition to the automobile yeah it didn't happen overnight it took about 10 years for people to give up their reliable horse and carriage yeah and convert to, over to a, a car motor, yeah. Uh, but Cadillac was, you know, one of the early starters. Cars went all the way back, you know, into the, the late 1700s even. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cuneau, which was 1769, was the first, you know, self-propelled vehicle. And it celebrated the 250th anniversary last year. Wow. Was uh, that with the steam engine? Or yep, what did they steam, run there? Yep. Steam engine? Okay. Yeah, and then they went electric. I mean, the 1800s was almost all electric. Yeah, isn't and, that crazy? Yeah, and then <laughs> gas and oil yeah. was monetized, you know, yeah. and, and subsidized. And now they're going back to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is a Rolls Royce 40 slash 50, so the wow. first Rolls Royce. Um, no way. So, you know, Rolls Royce, they didn't build the bodies uh, until, you know, the, the late 30s, early 40s, so post war. Yeah. Uh, they only built the powertrain, the brakes, and the chassis. Mm -hmm. And so the owners, every owner would body the car themselves. So they really? Take it to, they find the coach builder to exactly, do it. Exactly, yeah. Huh. So this one, it, it's got these kind of cool details. The horn is this like snake alligator. Huh. So that, you know, <laughs> the horn comes through and yeah, comes out. Yeah, that's funny. That's really cool. I need that in yours. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, I don't even want to know how much this is cost. Those actually, for 40 slash 50s are not bad. I mean, Rolls Royces, unless they're like, you know, one of ones, yeah. are not too bad. I would guess that's maybe a seventy, eighty thousand dollar $80,000 car. Yeah. You know, you had another Rolls... Uh, the round door. You'll see that. Round yeah. door. That's yeah. another favorite of mine. Yeah. So that, that's a one-off, right? That is a one-off, yeah. And what is that you think is That's worth? a few million, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let me know when you're tired of that. Here's too. the Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So we can, yeah, I'll take all. Oh, we can, we can pull this back. You sure you don't have to? It's okay. I'll put it back. Yeah. At least you can get the front. This is a really special car. Wow. And uh, what I, I think is cool is, you know, this is it's got the diplomatic windshield. So, uh -huh. you know, when the Shaw was going through town, you roll the windshield down, and it no cranks way. down so that your picture is not blocked by a windshield. Huh. Um, and yeah, these were extremely capable. Yeah, yeah one and It's one. got huge vipers. Look at those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those are so tiny as a Yeah. 
Wow. So, what it, what engine did they put in? Is it the same as the, another fifty seven? This is yeah. C? This is an inline eight. Yeah. Um, and you know, C is compressor, so supercharged. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, extremely capable car. I mean, for the day, you know, Bugattis were one of the fastest cars on the road. Yeah. And if you wanted to win races, you'd buy a Bugatti, you know, race car. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, but so yeah. What, what, when this sold uh, originally in auction at 750 bucks, it didn't look like this. Somebody's restored it over and over. Correct. Right? Yeah, it's been roughly, this, I mean, the body has always looked like this. Yeah. But wow. the color has changed. I you know, see. it's this beautiful, like deep blue. Yeah. I think it was a little bit more like of a purple when it started mm. off, um, like an aubergine. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, it's it's been there. I mean, the chrome wow. details and things like that. I mean, this this such is, an art. At the time, I like to say, you know, if you're trying to, you know, everybody in the world was courting Iran for oil at the time. Yeah. And so the British gave them a tea set for the wedding gift. The Americans <laughs> gave them an Airstream. The French give them a Bugatti. Yeah, you're gonna remember the Bugatti. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, incredible. Yeah, is just... Guys, just don't look at the size of the tires. Those are like bicycle tires they put on. Yeah. So thin. <laughs> and your know, Bugattis were famous for the you know the camber going in. Yep. And that's so that you know a lot of the roads in the 20s and 30s were unpaved. Yeah. And so you wanted to drift your car, you pitch it in. Mm -hmm. So that you, when you look at old Bugattis, always look at the wheels. Yeah. And you could tell if they were you know drifted. That's. Funny You've got a Cord L29, so yeah, you know, Auburn, oh, wow. Duesenberg, Cord. That is cool. That's a Lalique crystal. Wow. So, you know, Duesenberg's, uh, the Ruxton has yeah. them, the Cord has them. If How much of an auction was that? I just want to know. That was an add on. <laughs> yeah, so you actually you had to get a custom grill to house that. And if you were really cool, they did a little illuminated light, so at night it would change colors. Wow. Um, but Laliques are actually collectible in their own right. There are Laliques that sell well into the six figures. Crazy. Yeah. The only Lalique I have is on my Louis Tress Bravo <laughs> caps. <laughs> but yeah, this Very you know, cool. uh, cords were known for front wheel drive. So they were one of the yeah. first uh, production cars to have front wheel drive platform. Yeah. yeah. This is a 35 290C Mercedes, uh -huh. original and restored. And this one is, uh, can still drive. So it's only aesthetically, you, you know, degraded. Is it true they say they now, you know, these cars are worth more if you just don't preserve touch them? It? Yep. Really? Yeah. I mean, obviously, this is pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you don't want to go on a date on this. Exactly. One. <laughs> Uh, but like the Ferrari upstairs that I showed you, the black one, that would be the perfect example yeah. of an original unrestored car that's been you know maintained well. Yeah. That would be more valuable than a restored car. Yeah, that car. has cracks in the paint. Exactly, yeah. yeah. First Honda, so this is serial number 001. No. Um, N600, so it's the first Honda that you know they imported from Japan to the United States. Mm. And these were great little cars, the N600s. They're actually huge inside because, you know, there's really nothing to them. I can open the door right yeah. Um, you know, there's, you know, you're basically sitting on the ground like a little go-kart. Yeah. Um, but, you know, extremely usable car for four Very people. Cool. And yeah, yeah and the first, which is always, always a good one. Uh, you've got the round door rolls here. Oh, that's another one of my yeah. favorites. <laughs> And so this is, you know, about 21 feet long. Yeah. Uh, you know, we call it the round door because it's got that the perfect door. circular yeah. door. And uh, now this is OG. This is how you want to pull up. Yeah. If you're going to the red carpet event. Well, and this is a car that you would want to be driven in because you know, yeah. it's a Phantom One like the other one. Yeah. About 100 horsepower. What? Weighs, you're kidding. Yeah. So about Ooh. 100 horsepower, about 6,000 pounds. Wow. No power steering. No visibility. Oh, forget it. I'm yeah. not doing all that work. So you just want to get out of the car. You don't want to be yeah. the driver. <laughs> but it must be very slow as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was uh, the first commissioned presidential vehicle. Mm. So this belonged Ooh, to FDR. Wow. And uh, it weighed, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a Lincoln Zephyr. It weighed about 8,000 pounds. And if you look at the glass, it's seven layers of laminated glass. Yeah. And they put lead paneling in the doors. Wow. And so that's what those little silver things are. They cover because the gap is yeah. so big. Yeah. Um, you know, recently I went to uh, Mike Harris uh, Museum oh, in Santa Ana, yeah. and he has the uh, Al Capone's car. Yeah. 16,000 pounds. And I saw the thickness. It was like four oh, <laughs> yeah. of those you know, uh, glass layers put together. And he had the similar things. But what was cool, he had the little round circle for the machine gun. Oh, yeah. And then the two benches that fold down for yeah. the. Machine, yeah. you know, the guys who sit back there, 
There's a really way. there's a story that you know, again we can't yeah. legitimize that you know during the time this was being made, mm -hmm. uh, you know Al Capone's car that you mentioned was actually yeah. seized by the government, no. and FDR was using that car because uh -huh. it was armor plated until yeah. this was done. No. Yeah. How funny. <laughs> oh. And you can see the little yeah. step plates. So, you know the Secret Service would hop on the back and you know grab this yeah. to ride on it. So we got movie cars on this side. You've got yeah. Christine from Stephen King's, uh, you know, the Plymouth Fury. Uh huh. Thelma and Louise Thunderbird. Herbie the Love Bug. I've seen this one. Yeah. Even. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Too Fast Too Furious Honda. Mach Five with the Speed Racer. You have Evil Knievel's Stutz Italia, and then Howard Hughes camera car. A little lineup here, and then across you've got President Marcus's of the Philippines. Another. Mm -hmm armor-plated car, uh -huh. and this one has like the James Bond effect. It's got an oil slick and smoke screen in the back, uh. and it's also got the airplane landing lights, so you blind them with the lights and they hit them with the smoke and the oil. No way. I know Al Capone's car had the oil yeah. and the smoke machine, yeah. And it's like we've got, and you'll see it, the 901. Mm -hmm. 901 was before the 911, so Porsche got into trouble with Peugeot, Peugeot uh -huh. owned the trademark to any designation, like the numeric, numeric number on yeah. a car that had a zero in the middle. And so they went from 901 to 911, and that's how the 911 uh -huh. came to be. And so the 901s, they only made 82 of them, and they have become extremely collectible. Those are yeah. your seven-figure Porsches. Uh, Magnum PI, Ferrari 308. Oh, yeah. And then the Shagmobile from Austin Powers. All of these are you know, screen use. <laughs> Shag me later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, how cool is this? Pope Mobile, Pope John Paul II Pope Mobile. No way. And this is actually blessed, so it is considered a relic. Yeah. Uh, this is so cool. And we've got. This is something you never see anymore. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know next to the uh, Saddam Hussein Mercedes 600 Landelay. Oh. And so you've got you know the the good and you know the bad. Kind yeah. of <laughs> And this is really interesting. So Bob Peterson, you know, purchased this car because the the Pullmans were the most expensive, luxurious cars in the world at the time. Yeah. You know, only royalty had these. Yeah. And he wanted one, so you know, you have to buy them used. And he bought this one at auction. Mm -hmm. And our team of curators were researching it, and they're like, "Do you know who this belonged to?" He didn't know. Oh, he didn't know. Yeah, oh. it belongs to Saddam Hussein. So the story is that you know, during one of the raids, a soldier drove it over the Jordan border, sold it to a Mercedes dealership, and they auctioned it off. Oh. And so there were still like half-used water bottles and documents no. in the trunk, and so we have all of that stuff preserved. Uh, but it was, you know, original condition. You know, the back wow. has like scrapes where you know, the AK-47s were being held. Wow. And it's just, you know, it's a, it's an eerie car, but it is, you know, it's a piece of history. Yeah, absolutely. And the Opal next to it has uh -huh. about 800 horsepower. If you actually go over to that car and you peek in the window, uh -huh. look at the seating All position. The no, look at the oh. seating position. You're essentially it's lying down. Like Formula One. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh my god! <laughs> what? Yeah. Holy moly, that's, you don't expect that in no. this car. <laughs> yeah, I mean this car is like, if you started it up, it would shatter the windows. This is definitely one of the sleeper cars. Exactly. <laughs> Pulls up next to you, puts you to shame. Exactly. In your Bugatti. Yeah. <laughs> 24 karat gold floor, that's real 24 karat gold. What? So, uh, when American Express came out with the gold card, uh -huh. Uh, they did a marketing campaign where in the Christmas catalog, you could buy a real 24 karat gold DeLorean for $85,000. No. And the only, it's one of the few cars you can do it with because you know, it's a stainless steel body, so you can yeah. anodize it. Can I touch it? Uh, on the side, yeah. On the side. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but this one was placed in a bank showroom and never uh -huh. driven, so it's got 15 miles on it. What? It's pretty much a brand oh, new car. Man. So how much does this cost? I, you know, it gold goes up and down, up. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, today gold had a big spike, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So how many ounces of gold is this thing? I don't know. I mean, it's got to be a, a, at least, I would say, a, a pound or two or more. You know, mm -hmm. maybe five pounds. Wow. You know, to plate it. Amazing. Yeah. And so what is this? This is the first Ferrari ever. So this what? is the 1947 125S. By far no. the most valuable car down here. No. This one could potentially go to nine figures. You're telling me. Yeah. Uh, so basically, don't get close to it. <laughs> uh, 
but you know they wow. this one has been essentially completely restored. restored. Yeah. Ferrari Enzo Ferrari had built a few cars prior to this, mm -hmm. but they weren't original Ferraris, right? He had used like a Fiat, you know, powertrain. Yeah. Uh, they were called the Com Competizione. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first car to wear the prancing horse badge. Yeah, uh, it's still to this day I think is one of the smallest displacement V12 engines. It was one it's and a half. It's a V12. V12, yeah. Oh my yeah. god. One and a half liters, which means you know the pistons are like yeah, this big. Small, yeah. yeah. And um, what it weighs nothing probably. You no, know, probably weighs you know less than two thousand pounds. Yeah. Wow. It's all engine. Wow. For back then. Yeah. I mean to roll down a street a V12 oh, yeah. in that size of a car. Oh yeah, and this was you know oh. they had a this was like a. I would say like a street body. Yeah. And they had uh, an open wheel racing body as well that went on this mm. car. Because uh, that really was really cool. Yeah. And over here, that's that Porsche 901 I was talking about. So uh, mm. again, you know, 82 of them made. Yeah. Uh, extremely collectible. Essentially, just it's the same as a 65 911. Mm -hmm. uh, just you know, different badging. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. is cool. So that's the yeah, tri power, solar, electricity, yeah. and wind power. Wow. So this was a, uh, I think it was called the, uh, like the Xenon 3. It was a really uh -huh. cool concept by an Art Center student. Wow. Uh, if you don't know Art Center, it's up in, Pas in Pasadena. Yeah. They're kind of no, like I've the, never been up there yet. They're like the Harvard for car design. All mm. the car manufacturers like McLaren. They start there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and this designer said, if in the future we've got uh, 3D printing and nanotechnology, mm -hmm. this is what cars will look like. Come take this, Nate. This yeah. is so cool. Wow. So rough. And what, it, this is not a car, is it? It is, it does drive. So what? Um, there is, uh, we just uh, ended an exhibit called Disruptors and it uh -huh. was uh, Joey Reuter and Rem Coolhouse, who they're both industrial designers. Uh -huh. And uh, they did a project called Low Res and they took a Lamborghini Countach and they pixelated it on a computer. Mm. And at the lowest pixels, this is what a Lamborghini Countach looks like. And so they built it, <laughs> and uh, this car has been all over like music videos, and their company is called United Nude, uh -huh. that's the UN. And how the heck do you get in? And the whole top opens up, like a clamshell. Wow. The McLaren. McLaren. Hey, yeah. yeah. So that's actually the same body style that Bruce McLaren passed away in. Wow. Um, we had an MAE powertrain chassis, yeah. and McLaren donated the F body, which is the you know, iconic body yeah. for the M8s. But you can see, you know, upstairs, the M6 mm -hmm. that we have, you know, the engine was just like that, yeah. the wheel, like everything, it's just a yeah, different body. Really you know, originally my speed tail was going to be inspired from, with this exact spec. Yeah. The same number. Yeah. And then, you know, our man says, oh, it's a little too loud for their brand. Yeah. They want to go something more, you know, low key. Yeah. <laughs> We've got Bobby Ray Hall's Indy car. That's a, a gurney Indy car, an AJ for it. And this one was actually from the film Driven with Sylvester Stallone. No way. When he was an Indy car driver. So this is, you know, a movie ah. car. You know a little bit about him. Yeah. yeah. So this is our shop. <laughs> yeah. Split window Corvette. Oh, so we wow. We just got it back from paint. Uh, we'll auction this one off at our gala. So, you know, one of the ways that we raise funds is through building cars and then, and then auctioning. Yeah, like, yeah. And that allows us to, you know, keep restoring cars and, and buying sure. new But this one will be, we just came back from paint like last week. Wow. So what do you have there on second? Uh, we floor? got a Porsche display. Uh huh. And we've got that, we got a, a whole other floor. This is the first Porsche to win its class at Le Mans, 1951 wow. Gamond SL. Wow. You look at the power, wow. less than 50 horsepower. Wow. Uh, yeah, 46 horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> And it does 100 miles an hour on 46 horsepower. It was all lightweight, so you get, you know, endurance racing was yeah. longevity. Yeah. So if you were lighter, it meant you can go into the corners faster. Yeah. You needed less braking stops. Less fuel. Less fuel. Yeah. So it was just a really well-rounded car. And again, it, wow. you, again, you immediately can tell it's a Porsche. Oh, yeah. Um, that is really cool. Yeah. And these ones are extremely rare because the, the race versions. I think they made like five of them. Yeah. And you know, all the Porsche, like they consider these the transaxle cars that yeah. were the, you know, the front engine cars, uh, are getting collectible now. You know, the 928s, mm -hmm. the 944s, the 968s, all of those are starting to become collectible. This thing is stripped down. Oh, yeah. Basically <laughs> just Perfect for you. cars and coffee, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Hey, Michael. Great meeting thank you. you. So thank much. you so much. Great, Great sport. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Wow. Guys. How can you 
come to Peterson Museum and contain yourself. I'm still thinking about what kind of offer I should make them for the Shah's Bugatti, but I know they won't sell it. It's gonna be too expensive for me. Well, that but this favorite? was great. Hmm. To be honest with you, I saw so many incredible cars. I don't even know which one's my favorite. <laughs> I gotta watch this video when Nate finishes it. See which one's my favorite. But it was an incredible experience. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be safe, be well, and see you guys next time. People always ask me how I made my money. You see the Bugattis, Paganis, and McLarens? I've got it all from doing real estate. I've been doing that for 30 years. Buying, selling over $800 million. And now, I'm here to teach you. Because you got to learn it, to earn it. So check out the links below, and see you there.